Hey guys, it's Barry with Barry's A-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair again. And this unit is from a 1970 Chevy Nova. Wow, I didn't know this big old radio went into those little Novas. <coughs> but I... <coughs> But uh, this is uh, an AM A track out of a, a 70 Nova. It is now an AM FM A track out of a 70 Nova with an aux input. And this comes from Greg in uh, Idaho Falls, Idaho. Um, I don't get a whole lot of work from Idaho, so thank you very much, Greg, for uh, the job coming from Idaho. And let's go ahead and make sure uh, uh, the customer has requested use of the original connectors on this conversion, and it's perfectly okay to do that. The only drawback is you don't get that big increase in output power uh, that you get when you upgrade your speakers and run new speaker wiring so that the speaker is no longer a common ground system. Uh, going into a common ground system, uh, the output power will be roughly equal to the original radio electronics. Uh, but we do have, uh, everything is working again, so let's go ahead and turn her on. I have it set to the only AM station I receive in my area. Or even hormones for exhibiting confusion. So while we're on talk radio, I want to demonstrate. Uh, I never reused the original fader, the original front rear fader. Most of them no longer work. They're self-destructed by design. So we'll, what we have, we have, uh, we have a front rear fader and a left-right balance control. It's all right here in the tone control. And I'm going to show you how to activate these functions. Naturally, you know how to work the tone control. Counterclockwise is more bassy, clockwise is more trebly. Well, let's rotate to her on the center position. So we've got room to turn it either way. To activate the uh, the front rear fader, we're going to give our tone control two turns to the right. So let's try that. Okay, so now the same control is adjusting your front rear speaker balance. You can adjust it as long as you want to. And when you stop adjusting it, about uh, two more seconds fader and set. says fader set okay let's activate the left right balance More control journalism. same procedure except you turn our tone control and twice to the left balance adjust okay so now the same control is adjusting our left right speaker balance and of course this is also a good chance to make sure balance set. that I have the uh, the radio wire created because I I use uh, I use pre-made connectors for as many units as possible. That way, if uh, if I flip it over to a front left speaker and it's actually coming through the right through the right rear speaker, I know I've definitely got a wiring area that I have to fix. But uh, as you can see, I've got the unit wired correctly. Uh, and incidentally, the label on the back of the unit, if it still has a label, that is incorrect. Uh, the label is incorrect. The label that's on the back of the unit, uh, most of them thankfully are missing, but the label that's on the back of the unit near the connector is incorrect. So let's go ahead and switch this over to FM, which we do by turning it off and then right back on within about half a second. So we don't need these uh, meters anymore. So let's go ahead and turn it on FM. Off on. Okay, and I've got all the five presets set to stations in my area. And so as a result, I, I think one of the best. Yeah, oh yes, is a okay, that one just a little bit drifted there. So we'll just reset that one. Had just a slight drift off of frequency there. I was. For one day, only sinful, but inside. Okay, guess that one doesn't. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's, uh, a, yeah, that's a pretty small area for that thing to occupy. Okay, so that must just be too weak to consistently activate that stereo light, so we'll just switch to this station instead. Okay, let's pop in an A-Track. Got some Neil Sedaka here. That's my fault, that left speaker cut out. This is stuff that I accidentally recorded onto this tape. Let's get rid of that channel.
Okay, now this unit does have an eject button for the tape. I really don't recommend using it because these buttons are not very thick and after 50 years, that's 50 cycles of winter and summer, uh, these buttons are probably going to be pretty brittle. Uh, if you're able to pull this tape out without using that eject button, that's much better because... Uh, See, the, the front of this button, it's got a downward angle to it at the very end, so when you push it straight in, it's going to want to go downward, which could break it. So, if you do use this eject button, you have to be very, very careful to press it straight in. Uh, don't hit it head on, kind of hit it to where the center of your thumb is at the bottom of the button, and that'll make sure that that thing is not going to bend down on you. And of course, that's also a station preset. But I'll go ahead and hit the eject just so you know it works. So you see, you hit the eject button and it it pushes that tape out far enough for you to grab a hold of it. But you can also, if you're careful enough, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Maybe, maybe, maybe it is better to use the eject button because these controls are kind of close together and the buttons and all that stuff to try to get in there with your hand. So that's just, I don't think that's a very good design. Uh, I think that if nothing else, this button should have been a lot thicker if, if, they're, if they couldn't make the other ones, you know, thick enough to, 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 to withstand, uh, you know, force. Uh, but I just, I never did like that eject button right there. Uh, that's just... Um, it's just so easy. It's going to be so easy to break that thing off unless you're making sure you press it straight in with no downward motion whatsoever. So at any rate, let's test the dial light so we know those work. Now this center light here, this comes on anytime the radio is turned on. That light turns on, but when you insert a tape, the light the light turns off naturally. That way it's not sitting there, you know, making your tape hot and everything. So uh, she's ready to go back to the customer, and I'm probably ready to. Uh, oh, I don't know what I'm going to going to do after, after this but at any rate i'm barry with barry's eight track and classic car radio repair and my website and phone number are in the description below i do ask all customers to visit my website before calling me with questions about prices and options and what all do you do and stuff like that uh, my, my website is designed to answer all those questions without needing to take up my time and take me off the bench for a half hour of question and answer sessions um, and uh, you know after you've after you've read through my website and you've got an idea of what I'm all about, then you're welcome to call me. I'm happy to talk to you guys. I'm just not going to answer the same introductory questions over and over and over with each new caller uh, because uh, it's all on my website anyway. So uh, if you do call me before visiting my website, um, I'm just going to say you need to go to my website first, and that's uh, that's all there is to it. So thanks so much for watching and listening, and thank you again, Greg, for your business from Idaho Falls, Idaho, and we'll see you guys next time.